Another graphic example of how safety is built into the Bernelli design can be seen in this illustration, which shows that 65% of the structural weight of the aircraft is in the fuselage, surrounding the passengers with a rugged safety cage. The built-in safety features of the Bernelli were unintentionally put to the test on January 13, 1935. On that day, the Bernelli UB-14 was being delivered to the chairman of the United States lines for his personal executive use. Many celebrities were present, and in the excitement, the mechanics forgot to install the aileron hinge bolts. The ailerons actually tore loose from the plane as it made a low pass over the field. The plane crashed at a speed estimated to be over 130 miles per hour. This crash warrants a second look. Certainly an unforgiving way to crash is in this cartwheeling attitude. But Ellie examined the crash. The fuselage remained intact, and the crew walked away from this accident unscathed. There was no fire, even though the high-octane fuel of those days was more flammable than the fuel of today. These interior shots taken just after the crash prove the unparalleled crashworthiness and survivability inherent in the Bernelli design. Norman Golden, an ace marine fighter pilot who flew combat missions in the Pacific, is an aeronautical engineer and a retired FAA designated engineering representative. He is a staunch critic of current aircraft design and a supporter of the Bernelli lifting fuselage. Well, with the Bernelli having a much greater effective wing area, the uh, stall speed is much lower. That requires less runway length, and uh, also your climb speeds are much lower. For instance, on the uh, Dr. Max Monk, who was a very famous aerodynamicist in the uh, early stages of aviation, projected a Bernelli of 220,000 pounds, which would be much bigger than actually the MD-80 today. And this airplane had a, uh, using the FAA formula, would have a climb out speed of 99 miles per hour, which is 65 miles an hour less than the MD-80. Now this would result in less runway length, saving the taxpayers a lot of concrete, and also save the taxpayers having to buy a lot of expensive real estate around airports and uh, the fact that the airplane would operate slower doesn't necessarily mean it wouldn't be just as fast because uh, there have been tests run uh, by aerodynamic uh, analyst associates out in California that showed that a Bernelli uh, type and you can vary this of course by thickness ratio of the wing and stuff but this Bernelli type would uh, have a, a mock cruise of about 0.76 compared to about 0.72 with the 737. So the airplane can be fast and it still can operate at slower speeds. You don't have to have all of the gadgets and gimmicks to, that uh, are required for the present airplanes. And you're not taking off at these hair-raising speeds, which uh, uh, in the case of an accident, uh, just tear the structure apart. Airlines, passengers, and aircraft manufacturers face a turning point in aircraft design and safety. We have been flying cylindrical conventional fuselages now for over five decades. It may well be that airframe design and innovation has had a safe, efficient design on the drawing board all along. One of the uh, uh, committees in the House of Representatives has to do with transportation invited a number of uh, industry executives to uh, present their views of what the future of aviation in the United States was. And Mr. Shockley, who was vice, still is vice president of D uh, Douglas in Santa Monica, uh, presented a picture of an airplane which he called the airplane of the future, but which is exactly an airplane that Mr. Bernelli presented 20 to 25 years ago. You, you could practically overlay the airplanes and it looks like they're the same airplane. So what we're calling the airplane in the future now actually has been available for to us for at least a generation. What is the future of aviation? It has been said that those who forget the past are condemned to relive it. Our past includes the inventive genius of Vincent Justice Bernelli. His aircraft patents have been on the drawing boards now over 60 years. 
But even if we were to start building Bernoulli lifting bodies today, we would still be flying leftover conventional fuselages well into the next century. Bernoulli thought that eventually his designs would have to be chosen. In 1950, he stated, they will see that I am right. The lifting fuselage is the first new configuration since streamlining was introduced, and my plane carries more and carries it faster and safer.